That was a robot. <laughs> oh, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the first episode in the new year for the uh, Star Trek Adventures The Expanse. Uh, so I have a quick announcement that I've made the decision to um, bring the series to a close. Hypothetically, uh, unless I get a spurt of creativity, we will have another two episodes after this one, and we will be wrapping up. Uh, I know my players aren't happy, but I need a break. And who knows, maybe we'll come back to this at some point. Anyways, uh, it was a bit late for the Christmas episode, but I thought, tack with it, and let's do a Christmas episode. Uh, so, Captain Bashir, please take it away. Uh, uh, Stardate 84980.1. Earth year, December 24th, 2407. And, as it appears... Andor has completed another rotation, the day of my birth. Many planets, that's metagaming, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Many planets have a winter solstice, an important astronomical occurrence, and celebrated by the return of the sun. Many rituals include purification, dancing, and gift giving, a victory of light over dark, celebrated together with special foods, feasts, and sacrifices. My crew is no different. There seems to be tinsel on every deck, a tree on my bridge, and festive lights from Jeffrey's tube to Jeffrey's tube. And a feast is planned later in the Iceberg Lounge. But first, we have, we are en route to Katov, where a long-range sensors has picked up a chroniton distortion and a garbled signal using a heavily corrupted Starfleet signature. We have scouted this area um, when I was on board the Nighthawk. It was populated by a pre-war primitive species who call themselves the Catriff. Their technology seems to be that of 1400th Earth. Gunpowdered carriages, that such. And as it was noted and forgot, what and why is a Starfleet signature coming from this place? End lock. All right. So we cut to the exterior of the USS Concordia, traveling through warp at high speed, heading towards the planet of Katov. Of course, there will be a brief interlude until you get there, so we can discuss whatever it is that you guys want to do. Does anyone have scenes that they wish to do during this festive time? Captain Bashir. Uh, I was hoping to do that at the end. End. Okay. Uh, at let's... the at the at the feast in the of iceberg course. lounge. <laughs> of course. Uh, yes. Uh, Lieutenant Moore. Uh, nothing much. Moore is probably just an astrometrics enjoying his time. Okay. Uh, anything from you, Lieutenant Commander Moose? Uh. Yeah. You know what. Let's have one in engineering with uh, the new lieutenant we have here. Absolutely. Let's go down to engineering, where we are going to introduce Sunbay, who was such a hit with the group that he decided that we decided to bring him on full time. In other words, he asked, and none of us were, you know, brave enough to say no. So, instead of his previous character Helsing, he is bringing on Lieutenant Brass Knoll. A Bolian who has been working his ass off on Beta Shift and has now transferred to Alpha. So, uh, Lieutenant Brass Knoll, uh, could you please describe your character? Um, Brass is about the average height for a, a Bolian. Um, got the typical uh, Bolian outlook on life. Um, very cheerful, outgoing, um, and we'll get to learn more from him. All right. Well, it's your first duty. It's your first duty shift on Alpha, and you walk into engineering. And I'll well, let Reinhardt take it away from here. And you see Brass coming in. He's kind of huffing and puffing, a little bit out of breath. Reinhardt just looks at you. He's like, a little bit winded there. I. Th I th I think I finally got all the tinsel off of out of the hallways. 
security chief was saying it was interfering with his internal sensors. Mm. I think that's chaff or something. Well, I'm kind of concerned that you're a little bit winded there. You know, I'm going to assign you some uh, exercise duty. You're going to be, after at least three shifts a week, you're going to be coming working out with me. Oh, look forward to it. Good. Zax. Hey, by the way, he's got a Santa hat on and his beard's tied white. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> Zax, you're looking a little rounder than usual today, so you're going to be joining me with the gym tonight as well. Uh, I'll be at the party. <laughs> I have a special showing. No. I... You only need four hours of sleep. I good good <laughs> then brass yes sir what do you think of beta a... shift got a question how are you mm. winded with that whole air thing aren't you be breathing gas <laughs> that's no I... that's against regulation think you're thinking of a benzite I know I was I was <laughs> just trying <laughs> I've been running. It might qualify as a marathon. The security chief just had me going back and forth, up and down the corridors, picking up tinsel and tinsel. And there was glitter everywhere. I put a lot of hard work in that. Well, I saw the glitter and it wouldn't go away. I started working on a type of biodegradable glitter that would sublimate into a gas but it had I got to throw it off the drawing board it had uh, explosive results so I nah, me second hard. wife she loved the glitter it got everywhere ah memories <laughs> anyways <No. laughs> bros how did you find beta shift Um, going straight ahead and to the left. In terms of challenges, duty responsibilities. Um, at times it could be a little bit slow, but it was always full of uh, its own unique challenges. Slow. I've never heard an engineer in any department on any ship I've ever been on say they had a slow day. I always found something to do. Oh, I that's did. That's the where, case. You know, the biodegradable glitter and and everything else. But get my hands busy. Oh. But just the the designing things is where my real excitement comes from. That's where I was working on doing the rapid prototyping and. Hmm. Well, Zach, you hear that, though? Beta Shift apparently has it slow. We should give them some more work to do. Not today, of course, but, uh... About a, uh, purge of the dilithium lines. And maybe scrubbing of the plasma conduits. I'm sure you can find some sensors that need to be realigned. In fact, I should go do that now. <laughs> Excellent. So, tell me, Brass, what are you going to bring to my shift? Um, I have donuts. Okay, you don't get metaphors, at least human ones. What can you offer Alpha Shift? Oh, um, undying loyalty, a cheerful personality, and so far I haven't found an engineering problem that can't be solved. Okay, and what are your specialties? What do you believe you excel at and what you might be lacking in? Um, I do really well in the theoretical, um, pretty much applied sciences with it to practical applications. Okay. And do you know how to realign a, uh, deflector dish? Not by memory yet. Mm -hmm. However, the pads have all the useful information. Okay. And Do a how step. about, uh... I actually heard one of my instructors back at the academy say, 
read a step, do a step, get a banana. And what about uh, adjusting the alignment on the uh, cryo chillers for the dilithium lines? You gotta do maintenance on those? It fits in the pad, can do it. If not, we can see. Okay, that's interesting responses. We've shown pretty good work in beta shift. You want to be part of alpha, so you're here. But it looks like I need to shore up some rough edges. So Bud is going to be responsible for you. Bud, you're going to show him the ropes, standard maintenance at first, and then move up to the advanced levels. Bud just floats on in and just gets really close to brass. Like, uncomfortably invading his personal space, and he whips around, and then kind of bobs at Moose and then flies off. Like, you're going to have to learn how to understand him and talk with him. He doesn't have a uh, vocal processor? He does. He just doesn't talk to many people. Ah, got it. Wasn't sure if I had to adjust the volume on the output. Oh, don't don't make jokes about that. He will stun you. <laughs> Wasn't a joke, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not joking either. He will stun you. Oh, okay. You, I think you two are going to get along just fine. Dismissed. Aye, sir. <laughs> and while that is all happening down below. Up on the bridge, uh, Primrose uh, swivels around in her chair. Captain, we are approaching the planet Katov. On screen. Hi, actually, Captain. On screen is the planet Katov, a Class M world with a high ratio of water to land, approximately three fifths water, two fifths land. Is that right? No, sorry. Four-fifths water, one-fifth land. One moon and a large uh, dispersed asteroid field in high orbit. <clears throat> uh, uh, Moore, you, you know by now that the temporal... Um, the, that the chronoton displacement is originating somewhere near or, up, near or above the planet's north pole. That's all you know right now. I'll pipe up. Well, I guess we're going to find Santa. How uh, about scanning the uh, North Pole region? <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Uh, that would be a insight plus science, please. And the ship can assist with sensors plus science. This is going to be a difficulty of three, given the amount of chroniton particles and overall timey-wimey stuff. And I have technical expertise, so I can re-roll. Yes, you do. Um, sensor operations? That will be that would be perfect, yes. That's two from you. And who's got the ship? Nobody has it up. I have it. What was the roll? Uh, sensor science, please. That's it. That is three degrees of success. Uh, so the uh, the chroniton distortion f uh, is emanating from a point that is approximately uh, four kilometers directly above the planet's pole. Uh, it appears to be a the source appears ah intermixed with the chroniton particles is a series of uh, neutrinos, indicating that there's possibly a cloaked vessel, and, and it's very small, probably one or two person-sized craft. Now we're going to go find a sleigh. It seems like there's a, a craft about four kilometers off, due galactic north of the North Pole. Primrose, bring us in. That's be prepared. It seems to be cloaked. And you are... Shields up. Yellow alert. Okay. 
the ship goes to yellow alert. As you near the North Pole, uh, the distortions appear to be the same. Uh, they're not moving, or they're not getting any worse, they're not getting any better either. And within minutes, you find yourself in a geostationary orbit above the North Pole. Okay. Do we see an exact spot, uh, Lieutenant, of where these particles are coming from? Is it from the planet, or is it from the missing ship? Um, um, I'm, I, you, the ship? Yeah, I forgot to give you your free question. Um, so yes, you get it from the ship. Uh, they're coming from the ship, sir. All right. Just the scans and... Now, you know what? Let's let them know we're here. This is a Starfleet signal, so... Hail them. Okay. Hi, sir. Uh, this is going to be a communications test. Uh, so, this could either be done from... Ah, sorry. Uh, so this will be a control plus science or control plus engineering. And the ship will assist with communications plus engineering. This is going to be a difficulty of two to establish a communication link with the ship. Do you like me to do that role? No one else. Consider, is... yeah. I just lost roll twenty. Uh -oh. So yeah. <laughs> All right, control. You said control science. Uh, yep, control science, and then the ship will assist with engineering plus, uh, engineering plus, yeah, communications plus engineering. Difficulty of two. Computers as a focus. Um, or possibly linguistics as a focus. Uh, let's. I think computers would work as a focus here. Okie dokie. Hmm. Uh, it's one from Moore. Nothing from the ship. But you are you there we go. are you re-rolling because of your technical expertise? Um. I uh, it has to be the computers or the sensors. Ah. Right, sorry, not the focus, just the um, actual skills. Yeah. Ah. Sad. Very sad. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you, are, you attempt to establish a link with their communication system using Starfleet protocol, uh, but the Concordia registers that it is being actively blocked. Okay. I get up and head over to the sub um, uh, science station. Mm -hmm. Let me try something. Um, I want to do a scan um, using um, control science, mm -hmm. temporal mechanics, oh. and um, see if I can separate uh, or get any more information on the chronoton particles or okay. separate the two or you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, control. Uh, control science, either Scotty, either Moore or the ship can assist, one or the other. This will be a difficulty of uh, two task. So if Scotty wants to assist, it would be uh, either in, either, no. Uh, reason science or insight science for Scotty. Or, if you want to use the ship, that would be computers plus science. My reason science is a 15. Go for it. Ship would be a t 13. Okay. Bashir got a critical. Would any of my focuses work? Uh, what do you have again? Astrometrics, physics, computers, sensor operations. 
Bajoran culture, reverse engineering, and linguistics. Physics would work. Bajoran culture, yes. Uh, uh, four successes, so you get two momentum. Good, that's what I was going for. <laughs> nice. Okay, so, uh, Captain, you, uh, you're you digging through some sensor logs, uh, trying to find a correlation between you know, the particles you're seeing and any other known phenomenon. And there is indeed one indication of a similar event. And that would be, I forgot the start date precisely, but it would be USS Voyager's uh, encounter with the timeship Aeon and Captain Braxton of the 29th century. Hmm. Uh, using that, you are able to create a modulation of the deflector dish but it's going to require some work and will disable the deflector dish for the rest of uh, well prevent the ship from going to warp until the deflector dish is re you know remodulated aligned yeah. <sighs> okay so that we'll take the complication and make contact okay okay so that is two of my threat down by the complication Okay. You make contact. And upon establishing a successful contact, you see this ship, uh, triangular in design, it has more in common with a shuttlecraft than any other Starfleet ship. It is, of course, reading of a um, temporal, temporal signature roughly equivalent to that of Captain Braxton's time of the 29th century. Salutations! This is Captain Bashir of the USS Concordia. Do you require assistance? And why are you here? Timeship. Adraxis. Current status. Engine damage. Pilot missing. Pilot missing. Computer, when was the last time you seen your pilot? Uh, sorry, just double checking my notes. AKA sorting through everything to get the right character sheets here. Pilot Alla last has, has not made communication with this ship in approximately 24 hours distress signal was sent out. What? Where did your pilot go? Did they go on planet? Affirmative. And what was their mission? Mission? Detection. Starfleet, Starfleet vessel. Circa late 24, early 25th century. Temporal prime directive in effect mission classified location planet side Stat likely status hostage request uh, requesting aid as per temporal directive 92-5 beta-3 well we're here to help uh is there any information you can me can give me on mission? Twenty second century portion of mission. Ah, authorized. Ah, access authorized. And with that, the uh, view screen fills up with a data burst that has been shunted from its computer into yours where along with a highly sensitive or highly classified document of most likely its pilot, this individual, uh, Invigilator Mara Vic Alla. Her original mission was to, in, was to investigate a, an odd temporal signature emanating from the 22nd century. And out by her by the ships on or by the time ships on board chronometer it has been approximately six days or so since the mission was supposed to have kicked off the ship is also uh, emanating a severe or a severely unbalanced drive 
and does not recommend any time jumps until such uh, equipment can be re rectified. Can you make self repairs? Negative. Uh, Vic can we bring you on board? Not. Uh, you may. Ah, I may be brought on board. However, I may not be serviced uh, without direct supervision of Invigilator Alla or another representative of the Fed of the uh, Starfleet Temporal Investigation Bureau. Okay. All right. I'll hell uh, hell engineering and have the time ship brought on board. Um. I am going to <laughs> do an old fashioned little thing. And I was like, all right, Hadrix, you have the bridge for a moment. I'm going to go into my ready room. And as the ship is being on board, and um, I am going to use that little notebook and the box of the mailbox and send him a note to Mulder and Scully oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, send a, a little message to Mulder and Scully and tell them what we found and what I'm about to go do. <laughs> oh boy. Every, everyone loves dealing with the uh, Department of Temporal Investigations. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, because you guys... So, are... Oh, sorry, I've interrupted. No, 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 no. Go on. Right. You're fine. Okay. Um, so, uh, Moose uh, Engineering has request, or is requesting to bring aboard, ah, sorry, the captain is requesting to bring aboard a time ship into the shuttle bay. Uh, the shuttle, however, is made of a material which is very difficult to grapple with the transporter, or not transporter, the trans, ah, the tractor beam. Uh, because you guys might want more momentum, let's do a difficulty one test. For you guys to figure out what the heck's going on here. <coughs> so, moose or brass? Hmm. Well, I don't think I have a focus that applies to this. I have alien technology. Could that apply? There's so far in the future, there may as well be. I'll I'll let that slide. What would be the attributes and discipline? This is going to be a um, reason plus engineering. And it can either be assisted by you, or sorry, it can be assisted by brass or the ship uh, with either reason engineering or uh, structure plus security for the tractor beam. Well, I'm looking at a 14 for reason engineering. I'm at a 15. I will let you take the lead. Show off your skills, Lieutenant. Mm -hmm. This is why I came to Alpha Shift, sir. Excitement. Cool things happening. <laughs> Just don't scratch the deck plating. Oh, boy, pressure. <laughs> and I'll take one of those momentum. Okay. Which, with bold engineering... Bold is when you buy oh, it with threat. Yeah. Cautious. Oh, threat. that's right. Yeah. And if you want to I'm sure our GM threat. would be happily take that for you if you want to use bold. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, that's, that is three successes. Uh, who wants to assist? Uh, we'll have the ship do it because uh, I think Moose will head on down to uh, the shuttle bay to examine. Uh, what needs to be done and okay. uh, set up uh, proper procedures for temporal uh, interference. Yes, something that you are slightly more familiar with than many of the other people on the group, on the crew. Even and, though you came through naturally and, you know, all that stuff. And what was the ship, sir? Uh, the, the, the ship is going to be structure plus security. And that's one. So you guys get a grand total of three momentum. Well done. 
It's a slippery little sucker, sir. Oh, I forgot to change out all the chip tokens here. Oh, well. As you say that, you know Moose is not standing by anymore. He's just he's already gone. <laughs> he's I a slippery you're... sucker. I, I think you know that uh, you, as your captain that yeah, I would like any sort of scans or <laughs> anything you can get off this puppy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Samples. <laughs> Depends on the Christmas cookies. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see here. Why you want to make snow angels in the holodeck? Okay, so down to the shuttle bay. Pay no attention to the ship that it is apparently supposed to be covering. There we go. Where's your shuttle bay? There is wrong button. There we go. Uh, Moose, as you enter the shuttle bay, uh, every shuttle technician has paused their work to come and take a look at this shiny marvel. Uh, it's it is out. All of you, out. No, no, not one to look, uh, not one to question authority when dealing with t timey wimey stuff. You are now the only individual in the shuttle bay. The ship itself seems fairly seamless in design. It looks like it has been poured rather than welded or any of the like. Um, it's two, for lack of a better term, nacelles the glowing red orbs. One of it is pulsating rhythmically with a red to orange color. The other one is completely dead. And upon closer <laughs> investigation, you can see white, uh, a small orb of white lightning sort of crackling and fizzling deep inside of it. Betty, can you establish a link with this ship's computer? Raising uh, questions? It has, it has allowed us access previously, Moose. I am Good. I am reattempting a link. It says it does not wish to be disturbed until its pilot has returned. Well, as an engineer, I need to ask it a few questions. I shall translate. Lieutenant Commander Reinhardt, your file is one of, is marked within the Department of Temporal Investigations, file number eighty, file number eight hundred four, eight thousand four hundred twenty-three point three. Individual traveled from past to future or to present time, under uh, failed technical under a failed technical hmm, under a technical problem. Not, not time travel per se, and therefore has been cleared to stay within the present. Travel to past unnecessary. Well, my family's here, and I don't intend to leave them. A uh, couple of questions for you: Are you still utilizing the basic interface for interactions from, well, all of Starfleet? If you are referring to uh, voice recognition, that is possible. Neural uplinks are the current standard. Well, if you respond to Betty, that means that you're still using that old algorithm. And that makes me very happy. But I got to ask you about this cracked Boussard collector, I'm assuming? Temporal oscillation matrix. Hmm. Well, it's giving off some faint energy and light. I need to be concerned about that for the ship. Negative. It is self-contained. The safety protocols are in are in effect to prevent a significant to prevent future temporal breaches. And any damages that can be attended to right now that need to be looked at. Uh, let's see. Based on how this works, sorry, GM just processing. Negative. Very well. 
So you're just gonna sit here then? Affirmative. I'll make sure that you're left alone. Appreciated. Betty? Yes, Moose? Initiate highest class level of lockdown, Captain only, once I leave this room. Do monitor any life signs that come near it, record them and report them to security officer, and display accordingly for any adjacent rooms that they are not allowed to be in this vicinity. Understood. Uh, the Cap Captain Bashir will be notified of this request, and I will, and this, ah, and affecting shutdowns of neighboring shuttle of neighboring shuttle technical facilities and washrooms. And let me know when the area is clear, then I'll disembark. Noted. And after five minutes or so, you are given clearance, or Betty informs you that you can. It is clear to leave. And he will do so. Fantastic. Okay. Captain, we're back on the bridge. Yeah. What do you wish to do? All right, we're going to make an away team. Excellent. Uh, That's my favorite thing. I am, uh, Adrix, you're in charge. Uh, I don't know. I'm assuming um, I will take Brad's Knoll, since for obvious reasons, he's new. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, more? Uh, do you want to play more? Sure. All right. Apparently, I'm going to take Dr. Feliza, possibly, considering he just popped up on this thing. Oh, he did. Hi. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> You're about to... I will take Dr. Feliza on board to this away mission. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and, uh... Uh, Shizno, do you want to play... Uh, security, or do you want to be you whoever you want to play? Chisno. Yep, has Chisno gone? Muted? Yeah, he's muted us. Must be taking care of. Oh, I will just bring along Moose in case I hear, in case he decides to retroactively oh. change that. Oh, hello. Hi, there you are. Hello. <laughs> um, who do you want Would to bring down? Take on the way team. <laughs> Okay. Now I think I can hear again. Hello? Hello again. Okay. Uh, I heard Dr. Fulherza was being taken, and then that's my sound cut out. <laughs> ah. uh, uh, who do you want to bring along for this away team? Um, well, who's all going so far? Uh, basically all the main characters. Except right. Hadrix, um, for obvious reasons. Okay, so Hadrix would technically be on the ship still then? Yeah. Okay, well, then yeah, I'll take Moose. Sure. Okay, um... There's a slight problem. Um, none of you actually know where this individual is being held because no one's bothered scanning for life signs. Yeah, I'm just the engineer. I just fix the things I don't scan for life signs. That sounds like science department. That's a, <laughs> probably a science thing. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. I love you all. Okay. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so... Okay, apparently Moore's not answering either, so I will go ahead and scan for life signs. <laughs> yes. Moore must be uh, distracted with uh, company. He's mentioned he has some yes. guests. Okay, um, yeah, so Captain Bashir, or maybe for Eliza, either way, um, scanning for particular life signs is going to be Insight plus Medicine. Ooh. Let's see what my Insight Medicine... <clears throat> Uh, this will be a difficulty of difficulty of two. Okay. And the ship will assist with sensors plus medicine. Okay. Um. Yeah, sure. I'll take this. Sure. Um. I do not have sensor operations as a focus, but that is okay. Um. Is that for momentum accurate? Yes, it is. Okay, uh, I'll take one for a third die just to be sure here. And no focus. Alright, you got the two. Who's got the ship? Uh, sensors medicine for the ship. I have the ship. Alright. Uh, 
nothing for the ship, I'm afraid, but that's okay. All right, uh, so for Lisa, the population of the planet is approximately uh, just under uh, 500 million. Most okay. of them are that, well, actually almost all of them are that primate species known as the Kataf. And there seems to be a there seems to be a significant number of them that are congregated at the North Pole, approximately 200 of the damn little buggers, which is odd considering <laughs> that North Poles are pretty much the last place you'd want to find a primate. However, there's also two other life signs that are not Kataf. One is human. The other one is unknown to present Federation uh, databases, but is most likely that of the pilot of this time ship that you're looking for. Got it. Uh, Captain, seems like I'm reading uh, on this planet there's approximately 500 million of these Kataf. Um, 200 of them are gathered near the North eh, North Pole of the planet, which is a bit odd, but um, I'm reading two life signs that aren't Kataf. One is human and one... Uh, I'm not seeing this life sign in any Federation databases. Ah, probably the captain. Okay. That's a lot of people there. Um, from our previous encounter, quote-unquote, with these natives, do we know of any sort of dress or specifics from our earlier pre, um, yeah, you know, pre-scans of their technology? Uh, you know, um, as they're a primate type species, uh, they typically do not, or they're not dressed, or they don't wear a heck of a lot of clothing, uh, given that their primary modes of transportation or ambulatory motion is either walking or swinging. They would they would wear protective garments to keep them um, okay. protected against you know jungle stuff, you know the occasional heavy jacket or uh, th thicker pants, but still bulky enough for them to move around in. Okay, I'm a little confused because the original thing was like primitive, and they had like you know gunpowder and. and carriages and weapons and stuff like that but you keep referring to them as primates uh, so, so that may have been a typo in my uh, in the log notes they're a primate species so they're they look like an orangutanish or a mandrel style of species so they are primitive well you know 1400s level primitive but they're also primates so okay okay yeah. That's why I was that's like, a, okay, I, I, I was expecting, yes. yeah, I'm, I'm expecting us to, you know, beam down into like, you know, London 1400, you know, like, uh, kind of like, you know, at least like some sort of like society, but yeah. okay, there are primitives. Yeah, there are cities, but given the fact that they are, you know, like they like to swing through trees. They're more like they're more akin to giant tree dwelling cities. They're they're cities, quote unquote. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm a little less worried about beaming down and completely destroying their culture by having a big yeah. blue alien than having um yeah. To us trying to blend in and be stealthy and okay. All right. Now I got it clear. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> I just all right. Two different things in my head. All right. All right. So then I'm not going to have to get us all surgically changed into monkeys. So uh, uh, let's, uh, all right. Let's uh, get the crew and we will beam down to the closest possible place we can to the two, uh, the human life form and the unknown life form. Okay. Uh, uh, so just for my future reference, since I just got here. Uh, sure. What position is uh, our new lieutenant on this ship? Uh, engineering. Got it. Okay. Yes. And we are technically in timeline. It is Christmas Eve, and we are going to the North Pole of this planet. Huzzah. Uh-huh. Uh, 
And tonight is also our official onboard Christmas party. <laughs> yeah. There is there is tinsel lining every hall, lights across the entire thing, and apparently Primrose is not particularly happy that there is a tree on the bridge. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Totally fine. Don't, yeah, don't worry about it. it she, yeah. she might see it as murder, but it's fine. <laughs> My log, my log did involve sacrifices. Of oh no! <laughs> uh, okay, so one transporter sequence later, and you find yourself on a, the North Pole, literally, uh, a large spiraling structure, which is definitely not uh, indicative uh, or not reflective of the natives' uh, architectural styles. Uh, looms before you, approximately twenty stories tall mostly cylindrical aside from a large um, arch a large arch entrance way uh, northern lights uh, dance across the light skies and they also seem to dance from a significant amount of the spiral structure uh, swirling lights seem to emanate from the structure and disperse into the atmosphere uh, you are detect uh, for Lisa you're de ah you are detecting the life signs coming from inside the structure. Hmm. Seems they are inside the structure. And uh, looking at this uh, bridge, question mark, yeah. uh, that's in front of this structure, mm -hmm. is it... I guess I would run a scan. Is it ice or is it like a hard light structure? It is it is a hard light structure, and it sort Ooh. of, um, as you pl place one foot on it tentatively, it sort of ripples with uh, light and energy, but it is solid. I want to physics check this. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> uh, yeah, feel free to physics check this. Uh, this is going to be an insight science uh, difficulty of four, and it can be assisted if someone else wants to insight science it. Um. I will happily assist a uh, inside science he invented. I'm also going to buy a third die. Ah. Of all. Okay. Well, I have cautious, so I might as well. And physics is a focus. Well, if you had particle physics, that would make more sense, but I'll let physics slide. I mean, I have astrometrics and physics. You could kind of combine the two in a particle physics. <laughs> Here's a question. Can I use my temporal mechanics? No, not in this instance. Okay. Whew. Okay. Well, I'm going to re-roll that zero. <coughs> All right, because you have cautious science. Yes. That's I shouldn't have re-rolled the zero. <laughs> oh. We got three in a complication, so we okay. did not win. <laughs> we yeah. So your tricorder is coming back. Uh, null readings as you try to get better scans of the device of the bridge. The the structure reads perfectly fine, nice and solid there. This it does not though. The the bridge itself is you know purely hard light. However, uh, because you have a complication, uh, you do uh, you do see an individual. Um, Comes uh, comes to the archway on the other side. Uh, he's decked out in uh, garish blue captainy uniform, and he has a crown and a large twirly mustache. He waves. Ah, oh, hello, hello, travelers! Welcome, welcome! Do come in. Yes, yes, I have been expecting guests. Mm -hmm. Yes, do you come have. in. You've expected well, guests. Huh. And this was the life sign that I would have read as not human? No, this is the one that read oh, as this human. This is the human. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Greetings. I am Captain Bashir of the USS Concordia, and you are... Ah. Ah, top of the evening to you, blue boy. I am... Captain Mud once again, just taking up refuge in this drivel of a civilization while I'm waiting for my ship to be repaired. After that, I will be on my way, post-haste. 
You have nothing to worry. I understand that Starfleet is mm, out this far. We are a far away from your home, are we not? Right. Well. Oh, well. Just do understand that everything is tickety-boo here. We do not need... I, as I do not believe I am in your Federation-controlled space. I am outside your jurisdictions. Everything is fine here. Do totter off back to your ship and return from wherever you came from. Uh, no. Uh, I, we're at a Starfleet distress call that we are investigating. Until I get my answers, we're not going anywhere, Captain. His face sours a little bit. And if you can do a uh, presence plus command here, I suspect. Okay. Lucy just gonna tap the back of more and you're like, Mud? Did we help an ensign a little while ago with the same name? <laughs> Could I assist the captain with my outgoing personality? Um, <laughs> is that a talent or? Um, well, we have warm welcome. <coughs> well, warm welcome. Range. Yeah, sure. I got all kinds of fun stuff going on on mine, so. <laughs> so it'd be presence. Uh, presence plus command. And where is he now? And alien technology? No. But we get to ignore the complication range. Aw. Um, wait, ignore the complication range completely or just any no, extent? It increases. Oh, it's okay. only 20. That's fair. Uh, let's see. Presence plus command. Uh, nope, that's wrong. My roll is even Christmas colors. Yes, it is. Well, that's a <laughs> lot. Of, that. That's a Ooh. lot of successes for uh, Mr. Mud here. Ooh. Well, Captain, I just as Jimmy Boy was. It seems that you will just not be persuaded to go away. Is that the case? That is the case. Now, yeah. very well. I do, I do, ah, do remember when this happens that I did give you a chance. Oh, Kringo, my boy, it would make me ever so happy if these interlopers were transported to the prison cell so that they would not cause me any further dissatisfaction with their presence. Do make it hastily. And uh, because of the complication... There's a, uh, you don't hear anything, but you feel, it, it's not the typical transporter effect, but it feels like you're being hit by an onrushing torrent of water that disperses your molecules completely. And will wind you up in a section of jailed off or jailed off to the side of a massive complex. You are all in a small prison cell. Very, very primitive type. Off to one side. There. Uh, you are also with a individual. Where is she? I just had her too. There it is. Uh, sitting next to you, uh, completely um, devoid of anything that would be um, useful, such as you know, phaser communication, tri communicator, tricorder, any of that sort, is the individual that you are probably searching for, aka Miss Alla. You've also found the 200 or so, um, the 200 or so Kataf. Hmm. They are, they are all sitting sort of still, 
uh, in in uh, comfortable seats surrounding a large pillar of this glowing blue energy that you had seen outside. Uh, they're all wearing some sort of device on their head. Uh, they're all sort of watching... It looks like they're watching Netflix, except there's nothing on... Well, nothing on TV, really. They're just sitting there. all, And they're all smiling. Very happy. And... With a sound of trumpets that you're not entirely sure where they emanate from. Uh, Captain Mud strides back down a large spiral staircase. Uh, you can see that he has donned a cloak to, to go alongside with his crown. He has a gaudy scepter. <laughs> yes, yes. Be happy, my be happy, my friends. This is only a minor inconvenience as I prepare new transport, after which I will be gone, and you can be returned back to your state of, well, whatever dreariness this life of yours was before I graced your planet. Yes, ha <laughs> ha, ah. And he continues the stride along. As he wanders past a row of them, he pats a few of them on the head and gets to one of them. Does this boy have lice? Uh, Kringle, it would make me so happy if this individual was cleansed of its lice infection. Aha! Much better! Yes! See, not... Let it not be... Let it not be said that Harcourt Fenton Mud does not look after those who serve him well. And he... continues on his tirade, not paying you much attention as he continues to monologue to himself. Captain, what are you doing here with these inhabitants? Hmm. Well, as you... He pauses, takes a long goose step forward, turns on his heels, faces you, and struts toward you all. Uh, I'm simply making use of their happy energy, Captain. Happy energy? Well, absolutely. If it weren't for my... If it weren't for uh, this fine woman here, I would have just been... left on my... left on my own devices. I had freedom, after all, but nothing to do with it. The Starfleet was... The Starfleet wanted a... Or the Starfleet had such a wrong assumption about me, I would have been hounded anywhere I went. So, oh, how close is he? Uh, he's approximately ten feet away. Darn. <laughs> I'm on the ground by the scrub and pull him in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. So, who are you? Where are you from? Hmm. You're obviously not native. What gave it away? My lack of body hair. <laughs> No, I am Harcourt Fenton Mud, entrepreneur of the 22nd century. If it weren't for an chance encounter with this lass in distress, that is where I would be stay. That is where I would have stayed, probably forgotten by the annals of history. All the tireless work of the muds, of mud, lost to the ages. Did you know that in this time I was portrayed as a simple criminal? <clears throat> Posh! Pish posh! That just won't do at all. No. No, no. Anyways. Uh, this I stump. I had just reclaimed my freedom. You see. And where else to go but to a, another vast part of the unknown galaxy? And I stumbled upon this ship. Well, this young woman stumbled into me. She was in distress. And I, a no a being of noble, magnanimous influence, of course, just had to help her. Was that used in the 22nd century? Yes. I'm from that, too. Ah, a fellow man out of time. Yes. Pleasure to meet you. I'm going to get closer. Hmm. Gonna hold up my hand to shake his hand. Hmm. 
He will pause a second, and then he will stride forward, grasps yours firmly, and shakes it. I shake his hand strongly, and I pull him forward, <laughs> and I'm going to cover his mouth. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's going to be a uh, opposed daring security, I believe. I suspect you have... Um... Eh, you never know what mud will do. Let's see what mud does. Well, he'll first try to resist, of course. Probably won't, but... Of course, I close his character sheet because I am a good GM. So who rolls first, me or him? Ah, uh, you do, since you are the aggressor. Okay, I'm going to take a momentum for a third dice. Okay. Okay. Make a combat training? Ah, uh, yes, indeed. That's three successes. Let's see what he does. Well, he puts up a little bit more of a resistance than one would think, but looks like he's used to trying to escape grasps, but not your grasp. He squiggles and worms, and you hear, <laughs> This is tight. I wrap, uh, I, get, I wrap myself around him so I'm behind him and holding him and just have my arm, like have mm -hmm. my hand across his mouth and then my big other arm just underneath his underneath his chin. Yeah. Not choking him, just holding him. And he's like, okay. All right. I, I'm going to grab the scepter and anything else he has on him. Okay. Um, so while you're all doing that, uh, what are the rest of you doing in prison? If anything in particular? Um, <laughs> on what just happened. Yeah. Uh, remind me what the name of this lady that's in the cell with us is. Oh, I forgot to make her uh, name visible to everyone, didn't I? Uh, let me rectify that. It is okay. Mara Vic Alla. Mara Ik Alla? Vic. Okay. One second, I will make that readable by everyone. There. Oh, there. Oh, I see. Vic Alla. Got it. Uh, I'll just walk over to uh, Mara. Mm -hmm. uh, so you do not need your um, tricorder to realize that she is um, suffering from a bit of malnourishment. Uh, she's fairly tall, lanky, and aside from a tuft of hair on her from the jutting out from the back of her domed head, um, that seems to be the only hair on her. Uh, she seems to share more in more common with uh, sharks or other carcaridon like species, indicating a aquatic hmm. evolutionary source. You must be the other person we were searching for. Starfleet? Yes. Uh, <laughs> if, I, if I may ask... What species are you? We don't have it in our databases, so we didn't recognize. I'm. It's unlikely you've encountered my species yet. Uh, we came. We hail from deep within the Delta Quadrant. And I think, uh, until I'm more certain of when I am, I think that's all the information you should know about me. Of course. And. Uh, when we were uh, transported. Was anything taken off of us? That was my question. Ah. Uh, your weapons have been. Your tricorders have not. Um, okay. However, Moose still has his fists, so not all weapons, you know. Right, yeah, right. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist making that pun. <laughs> uh, I'm for the Lisa only gun needed. Just... <laughs> uh, so, uh, what was that for Lisa? For Lisa, will sort of dig around uh, and a pouch that he has at his side and pulls out what essentially is like maybe like beef jerky almost okay. and sort of just hands it over to them. Uh, she takes it and chows down almost or immediately uh, using more of a tearing motion than a bite and chew. Uh, you can right. see that her shark-like nature extends to her rows of teeth as she uh, bites and swallows. Hmm. Huh. That's better. Do not let this individual's uh, cheerful demeanor fool you. He is quite crafty. 
My ship. Is everything okay with my ship? That I'm not quite sure of yet. We haven't found it. Oh. Mm. Well, actually you have, but, but are you blocking? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You came in slightly, you came in just after their ship got towed into your shuttle bay. Whoops. Ha <laughs> ha. In that case, uh, I retract that statement. <laughs> uh, what do we know about their ship? Is it... Uh, time ship are Aeon, we... similar to that of Captain Braxton. Or gotcha. Time ship Aldrax, I should say. Or Atrax? One gotcha. of those Texas. That seems relatively okay. We're working on it. Um, I should probably introduce myself. Uh, and they'll sort of just extend out their hand. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Junot for Lisa, USS Concordia. Concordia. Her eyes wide. What's? Yeah. And then uh, she, her eyes quickly dart around. Uh, they glance over Moose, who is still holding a struggling mud. And Bashir, who is currently pulling the uh, D and D equivalent of a rogue and stripping mud of any uh, interesting trinkets. Oh, you are Captain Bashir. Ah, I shouldn't say this, but I'm a big fan of your work with the Cations. It's standard teaching for invig invigilator studies, how to perform a, uh, a long, a, a deep or deep insertion modif modification of the time stream with ah, with a uh, incursion index less uh, less than 0. 0.65. Uh, Bashir must be dumbstruck because he's my... I said thank you, I think, as I'm like screwing around with like trying to figure out if there's keys or <laughs> like if the staff gets us out of here. <laughs> uh, um, let's see, how would this work? Because I was not assuming that Mud would be silenced. Well, he's silenced, so yeah, uh, you find a series of old uh, skeleton keys wrapped or ah, tucked underneath his belt. Along with a large glowing uh, belt-mounted uh, orb of some sort or another. Okay. Uh, as toss you... the key. Uh, well, uh, I'll toss the keys to more, and I'll start playing with the orb. Uh, as you uh, begin to look at the orb, uh, she shouts, "Don't touch that! Be careful!" It's. It's the. Uh, it's how he has control over the entity. If the you... entity? Uh, well, okay. Anything in the 22nd century, or anything in the, in the 22nd, 23rd centuries should be access, should be fine to say. Anything in the future? No. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. My original mission was to ha stand, was to head back in time uh, to assist an, e to assist a trans-dimensional entity. It was way, it was failing in space, and according to a uh, paradox, I was the in, I was the invigilator who helped it, so it was me that went. However, I was un, oh, I was unaware that this individual, and she points to Captain Mud, has had a significant amount of exposure to a time crystal. At some point in his past, he's radiating temporal energy. My ship breached <laughs> near him damaged and then he captured me and in an attempt to escape I pulled him, the entity and his sh ruined of a ship and his passenger here you said passenger there's somebody else a woman uh, she was unconscious I haven't seen her since he called her Stella Hmm. Hmm. Reinhardt, you got him. He's still I'll just squeeze him a little bit, and he's like, "Oh yes." Yeah. He lets out a uh, high-pitched squeak, like a helium balloon. <laughs> uh, yeah, you still have him. <laughs> okay. I, I said I tossed the keys to Moore to get us out of here. Um, I said I. Yeah, you got a whole ring of like ancient keys. Yeah. 
trying each one. <laughs> That's not working. Going around the ring, and eventually I make it like three times around the ring before I actually find the key that I skipped. Well, of course. You know, 18th century key or 14th century lock and key technology is not really taught uh, among the Academy of Sciences. But yes, you eventually find it and unlock your jail cell with a satisfying clunk. Am I just? Am I the only one in my jail cell, or do I have to do that? To it, it, it's a communal jail cell. Okay. All right. I unlock it and we step out. Okay. Uh, While all that was going on, mm-hmm. I'd like to be using the tricorder to kind of scan for any type of power signatures, kind of what that technology and what all of this is actually doing. Of course. Uh, that is going to be an insight plus engineering. Uh, you have an engineering tricorder, I believe, which reduces the difficulty of things by one. Still, that's and, going to be a um, difficulty of three. Okay, and let's give you a threat okay. for a die. And I do apologize. I have made a slight mistake. This is not the 22nd century. This is the 23rd century he was referring to. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, 20... I always get I mix those up in the heat of the moment. Twenty two sixty something is when he was pulled from. Still, good bluff, Moose. Good bluff. Good bluff. <laughs> and yeah, you did technically te- exist. Sorry. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. My yeah, bad. Moose technically existed during that time, but it was very um, brief. So, anyways, yeah. um, so you're taking you're giving me threat. I like threat. Yes, and uh, alien technology, power systems, quantum mechanics. Yeah, any of those would work. Well, that's uh, three successes you need. Congratulations. Uh, so you are picking up all sorts of interesting alloys, but none of them are technically s- present. Uh, they all seem to exist from an close close enough. They exist from an alternate dimension, but are also existing here simultaneously. And what it's doing is uh, the closest readings that you're finding. Um, your tricorder is. Well, I'll give this to you. Um, do you remember uh, TOS, the beta? I think it's the beta 113A entity that fed off 8. I think that's the. Okay. Entity. Yeah, this one's doing something very similar with the empathic energies of happiness. Uh, it seems to be fun. Something is funneling joy and happiness out of all of these smiling Kataf, uh, turning it into or transmuting it into some form of energy and it's being sent skyward in vast quantities it appears to be coalescing into some taking form into something but from this far down you're not able to see what it is and is it that scepter that's the control rod? No, it's... Uh, That's the belt I got. Yeah, it's it's the... The scepter is purely ornamentation. The uh, belt object that the captain has seems to be... It's not controlling it, but it bears more in line with a complicated uh, chroniton communications device. Something very similar to... Um, uh, quantum paired communication devices just throw time in with all that boggly book. Sir, this is fascinating. They're sucking the sucking maybe not sucking not, maybe not the right word because they don't look to be harmed, but it's feeding off of the happiness off of the people and sending it in vast quantities outwards. It all seems to be controlled by that belt rig you have. Okay. This is it. So, all right, Alla, what do we need to do to set things right? Well, what you need to set things right is uh, 
this man, and he, she points to the individual still firmly grappled in Moose's arms, has to go back to the 23rd century. We have to find his companion, send her back too. Um, his ship could be reconstituted easily enough using my... No, that's classified. Um, then the entity will also have to be convinced to go back so that it can continue its... I have to rescue it, so then it can continue to exist until the 29th century, where it will need our, where it will continue to bring joy and happiness to individuals across the galaxy. Um, at which point, I will then be told that it will have to be saved in the 23rd century to. Okay, okay, okay. And then Got I have it. a lot of paperwork to fill out. <laughs> Understandable. So, all right. Uh, where are our weapons? Communicators and such? Yeah. Captain? He muffles a, some form of answer through Reinhardt's hand. It's completely indecipherable. As look to more. Did you get that? Linguistics? <laughs> well, maybe if Moose were to let him speak, that might help, but... I would... I'll say that kind of smart act. Uh, uh, like you, like, well, I don't speak muffled by hand. I'm just gonna lean down very close to Mud's ear and whisper, "Try it. You won't feel it." And I'm just gonna move my hand away. The barbarity of this! Here I am, offering you. I just squeeze a little tighter. Okay. Uh, 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 well, answer the question. Kringle most likely dis to disintegrated them. Yes, I didn't want them part. I didn't want them here, so they're not here. What he does with That's the don't... answer. I cover his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like we need to figure out who this Kringle is and connect to them? Oh, I think I have the connection right here, Lieutenant. Moose, why don't you go ahead and put him in the cell? <laughs> Moose just flexes his arm for a second. He's like, oh, right, yes. <laughs> the cell. <laughs> uh, as you get a cursory glance through a couple of the other neighboring cells, uh, you do see a another uh, human-appearing woman unconscious in the cell next to you. Uh, she appears to be asleep and is just sort of passed out rather um, rigidly on a primitive cot. Secure mud into the cell. Uh, Lieutenant Moore, Brass, uh, see if you can free the natives from this device. Um... Can I, is the crystal, can it be, I'm assuming he just did it to um, be glittery and show it off. Is the crystal can be removed from the belt? <laughs> um, despite fairly loud protestations, um, Moose, unser, well, how do you place Captain Mud in the uh, jail cell? Well, once we make sure that he's uh, sufficiently disarmed by the captain, um, have anyone ever seen Fresh Prince of Bel Air? You know the scene where Jazz gets thrown out of the, <laughs> the mansion. Yep. Every that's, time. Yeah, which time? <laughs> <laughs> that's how Mud enters his cell. He lands with a uh, s the sound of uh, about mm, he's, he hits with the sound of a sack of potatoes filled with water the audacity here I am just attempting to make a living with my, I'm just jail I will not stand for this you will hear from my attorney I get up real close I'm like I can make sure you'll never stand again well you're not related to the Jimmy boy Kirk are you just started reading about him, actually. 
seemed like an interesting fellow. Yeah. Don't believe what here. Do not believe what history tells you, there, boy. That man is a menace. He sticks his nose into places where it doesn't belong. Him and his Vulcan companion. <clears throat> the doctor was nice, though. My kind of man. Spike, right? No. Sprock. Sprock? Uh, nope. Spock. Mm. Still uh, trying to remember all the names. I look out right at him as like, sounds like an honorable captain. And then we walk away. <laughs> Although I do like Scotty. Good engineer. Please. Berliza, check on the his companion and see if there's anything to if she's all right. But of course, let them get together. Oh, so you're putting them in the in same children. cell? No, 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 no. Okay. No, because she's in the cell next door, yeah, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. I was going to say, so I want him to check. I want Belisa to check on her, but I don't want them together because I don't right. trust that. Okay. Um, and uh, more and Null, see if you can get the primitives free from whatever contraptions that they're hooked to. And... Reinhardt, let's see if you can help shut this thing down. <laughs> okay. And Allah, you're with me. Of course. Okay, so, uh, for Lisa, if you could please yes. do an insight medicine check, please. This is going to be difficulty zero. Okay. So, let me... There's for Lisa. sheet. I can read. Um... Okay. I don't need no dang extra dice. That's three successes. Need... Oh. You get three momentum. Beautiful. Well, uh, so your tricorder comes back, and she's not organic. She's an android. A primitive one. Uh, ancient, too, apparently, but... <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, is there... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Ah, fine. sorry. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, she's an android. Uh, very primitive by, you know, data technology, but... Am I able to discern maybe what century they're from, or...? Um, I'm not sure that I even have a source for these guys. Um... Because <laughs> uh, they were older. They were older than he was, because he found them on a planet, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it was either the technology... I'm just going to say that they're approximately, well, 2,000 years old. Uh, uh, well, the core of the core of her is approximately two thousand years. Okay. Old. The exterior is new. So basically, like the the quote unquote skeleton is old, but the yes, correct skin is new. Okay, got it. Huh. Uh, Captain. While this is yeah. very old, this isn't. Android. And I'm talking extremely old. Uh, the core of it is, well, and I'll just sort of <laughs> show the captain the readings on the communicator, on the communicator, tricorder, haha. <laughs> Okay. Keep him away from mud. I don't trust this situation. I don't want her letting him out. Of course. Um. Let's go ahead. Uh, keep her in the cell until we know more. Is she conscious? No, she's not. She is off. Okay. There's a power cell inside of her, but. It's dormant. Well, she should be fine here. Um, leave her here. Uh, Floriza, uh, see about the primitives and uh, help out with that. Of course. <clears throat> All right. As we'll go, 
As uh, Feliza, we're gonna split, oh. yeah. Split the party. Yep. Split the party. As Feliza does that, Moore and Noel. Oh, what do you guys wish to do? Um. So they're hook, like hooked up to a machine. Um. No, they're all just they're not hooked up like wires and whatnot, but they're obviously connected through some sort of wireless communication signal into their headpieces. Is it like a VR headset or? Yeah. Um, no, more like a single metal band, a dual ringed metal band with all sorts of flashy lights on it. Um, it appears to be tapping into their, uh, so into their uh, higher brain functions. Hmm. Yeah. First, the, figuring out how it works. Okay. Is there one that is not attached to a person? No, uh, no, there isn't. Not that you're able to see. That's my boy. Strap it on and see how it works. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> um. Uh, no. No. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my. Uh, phrasing. Phrasing. Um. I'm going to try to scan and see what, like, the tricorder's reading as, like, the higher brain functions or, like, the general readings okay. that we're getting. Uh, so, um, one of you could uh, take the lead with uh, reason plus science or reason plus engineering, and the other one can assist with reason, science, reason, engineering. Uh, difficulty of three. I'm shooting for 15 reason, science. I'm shooting for a 15 and probably have a focus. I don't think Moore has a focus on this. Unless, unless sensor operations could work. I got that. Nope. I will, let, I will let alien technology work, though. Okay. You lead, I assist. Alrighty. And how about I take give you a threat... Okay. Merry Christmas. Yay, Christmas. Nothing from more. And Noel, you take it. Uh, so Noel, you see, this is very similar technology to um, primitive holodeck technology. Uh, where, you know, ships or captains too cheap for actual holodecks or hollow suites have uh, neural stimulators and sensory overrider glasses. At least that's the first function of this. The second function of this is the aforementioned wireless communication system that saps their higher brain, or that harvests their um, higher, or their brain functions in the parts of the brain that produce the uh, feelings of joy, satisfaction, and the like. It then t harvests that and beams it to the central column. That moose is currently looking at going up and down. Could we sever it and not have negative repercussions? Well, you can try. Could we spend a moment on Instead, looking at because don't want to yeah. do anything that could right. jeopardize yeah. or create the, an uh, advantage. Yeah. If you want to spend two momentum to create the advantage, <laughs> I will say that you can do that. Sure. Right. Well, lo looking at, you tell me more. Do we want to looking at? Is it safe to just take it off of them? Um, what if the, a, a different emotion would be fed through? I'm probably a little bit too much on that. It's probably based on the mm -hmm. entity. Or... Are they sedated or more like in a trance? A trance-like. Is it a similar trance like what the um, the Enterprise experienced when they're trying to be taken over by the, this little game that people would be playing? That's what I'm thinking too, dude. Yeah, I, was exactly looking for, what I was thinking. Yeah, I was looking for a gif with the like little balls going into the hole. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little yeah. thing. That's pretty much it, yeah. 
Could we sedate them? Sure. Ooh, there's 200 of them. For Lisa, hand, throw me a uh, hypo. <laughs> uh, and that's easy enough. You catch a hypo. Inject it without injecting myself because I have a medicine score of one. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Injecting a drug into a species with uh, that you haven't even bothered performing a cursory medical examination to see if things are, you know, compatible or not. Let's go. Sure. Sounds about right. Yep. Okay. Um, if just because I find it funny, uh, do the injection. This is going to be a difficulty one test. Uh, control plus medicine, and I'm going to spend some threat to increase the complication range 18 to 20. Could I assist him? I don't think well, so. You guys are, you assisting. Not in this instance, because, you know, oh. one hand, one tr one hypo. I got it! <laughs> yeah. Yes! Yeah. And I got a complication! <laughs> yeah. That's uh, an 18. <laughs> yeah, that's an 18. Fantastic. Okay. Well, we... Uh, so you... Uh, you uh, sedate it at the same time that, Noel, you believe it's safe to pull the um, headband off. And we will come back to that complication shortly. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Reinhardt, uh, you head up to the uh, central point of the... Uh, the central column of this large dome thing... I'm just going to call it a dome. That works. Uh, where it's taking all the coalesced energy and sending it up. Where it's not using any obvious interface. Everything seems to be running behind the scenes, so to speak. Mm -hmm. There's, um, it's oddly quiet. There, all that you're hearing is sort of like a, a soft breeze sound. As everything sort of coalesces and sends itself up. Okay, well, I'm going to keep heading up to uh, find out where this uh, Kringle's at. All right. All right, so uh, you head up several flights, or you head up an internal staircase that, like everything else Mud possessed, is completely gaudy. Um, for some reason, he has all sorts of pictures of himself in royal poses and garb. And there's even a couple uh, featuring him and this uh, woman uh, that were in the uh, cell next to him, uh, labeled uh, Captain Mud and First Captain or First Mate Stella, soon to be rulers of whatever planet they want to be. Uh, you make your way up and up and up back to the exterior. Or at least you get to see the inside of the exterior now. Eventually, it's roughly the time you get bored of doing stairs. Yeah. Is approximately the time that you notice that there's a platform that takes up the rest of the way. Again, there's no sense of control mechanism. You just step on it and it will take you straight to the top. It's kind of calming, actually, how easy everything is. And you look up through the dome ceiling where all, where all the bits and pieces of energy begin to um, sort of turn into a snow-like texture, float up, and will coalesce into... Uh, you're seeing what comes this... It's building a starship. Not just any starship. It's a pretty awesome looking starship. Hmm. Large hmm. enough to... Uh, it's big and gaudy. Looks like it would need at least a crew of 200 or so to be operational. Flash. Oh. To <laughs> save every one of us. <laughs> I like how it looks like a giant sleigh. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I do too. 
I just love that someone made a ship look like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's amazing. I know. <laughs> huh. It was a good day on DeviantArt, wasn't it, Cat? Or, uh, you know, some days, it, you know, some weeks I can scour the internet for days trying to find a picture I want, then having to settle for something that works well enough. Sometimes I see a picture and go, you know what? The story is about this now. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, do I see anyone? Do I see any control consoles or anything like that? You do not, no. Everything up here is just more for a viewing area than anything in particular. But, down below... Uh, let's see, while you're still up there scoping out a ship... Captain... Your crystal begins to vibrate, and inside oh. your, and your antenna subconsciously resonate with it. It's kind of tingly and not in a good it. way. Unfortunate. As like I hold it up and look at it. Yeah. Uh. I am, I am no longer receiving happiness from you. Is everything all right, friend Mud? Mud is gone. Who is this? I am Kringle. Kringle? Yep. And I am Captain yep. Bashir of and the USS Concordia. As you begin to speak, this small being appears. And I couldn't really find a picture of what I wanted, so this is just going to have to suffice. Um, it appears sort of red and translucent-y right in front of you. It appears to be a hunchback uh, creature Ruh, that stands about four feet tall, but even then you get the distinct impression that it could manifest itself at any other size. Um, however, judging by the fact that none of your crew is drawing, you know, reacting to its presence, chances are it's only visible to you. Gotcha. I am Kringle. I wish you to be happy so that I may f feed. Mud, or friend Mud, was capable of generating so much happiness. Mud did it in a bad way. He is a con man and a thief. We are here to set you free. I have no concept of those terms. All I know is that I fed well, and that I was able to assist, then by my assistance, I have made Mud even happier. Therefore, I was feeding well. I was satisfied. We will do our best to make the bounty massive and return you to where you should be. Um, Captain, you receive a sharp elbow to the side from uh, Vic Alla. Oh, is that is that the entity? Yes. Oh, oh. good. Um, please uh, pass on my re my uh, fi uh, my regrets and failing to aid him at first. Uh, he, he must return back. He must return with us back to the twenty third century so that he can be set properly. Uh, he can't Say, do you stay here. Do you know where you are? Yes. I am on a planet with many souls. Many souls who wish to be happy. I have begun the process of changing their memories so that they will feel great joy upon receiving the gifts that I give them. And that is a wonderful thing, but these species shouldn't and are not ready for these gifts it is too early for them we wish to help you and take you to where you belong in the time you belong and you can feed and bring happiness to a whole galaxy of being I have uh, this entity has noticed that it is out of sorts 
Um, Captain, please roll me a presence plus command test. This will be a difficulty three. Okay. And if you have uh, um, a... negotiations or you know diplomacy, diplomacy or you know first encounters, okay. that would be good things. I am going to do bold command and give you threat. Okay. I know. Yeah, That's yeah. just what I love doing. Uh, okay. You said daring? Daring, yes, please. Okay. Oh, no, daring. sorry. I said presence plus command. Presence. So, sorry. I just just went on autopilot there for a second. Okay. I was like, I'm in trouble if it's daring. I don't know what's going on. Okay. <laughs> and that gets... Oh, we got four. I'm going to take them. Die. Okay. And diplomacy. Come on, baby. Well, uh, that's the three successes you need and a complication. Cool. Okay. So with the bold, I get to reroll one. Aw. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, of course, you know what I'm going to re-roll. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You'll re-roll that red. Uh-huh. Sad. You're going to re-roll a crit. <laughs> hey, there you go. Four successes, so you get one momentum out of the deal. <clears throat> this entity... Uh, I understand... However, this species deserves one day of joy a year. That is all I require. They will open up period-appropriate gifts that bring many of them happiness. After that, I will have all the energy I require to fulfill the goals as set by the other from the future who has sent back to aid me. I'll tell you what, I'll agree. For a 24 hour period, this species can finish and receive the joy and gifts. That is acceptable. I sense that brings you happiness. It does. It has been some time since I have tasted Andorian joy. It was delightful. Thank you. And with that, the crystal goes silent. And it stops quivering. <laughs> All right. I yell, I'll uh, yell back to uh, Moore and Noel. And I was like, hold off. And that happens just as Moore injects the... Um, uh, the... Uh, serum into the Kataf's bloodstream. Well, good news is it's disconnected from the um, uh, it's sedated and disconnected from the network. The downside is the Kataf are a smaller species than most humanoids. Uh, so, more you've just overdosed him. Uh, sending him into a, a, a <coughs> cardiac shock. arrest. Uh, for Lisa. Oh, great. Love this. Good. Uh, yeah. Don't think do, you're supposed to be doing that. Do I have the equipment on me to try and stop this thing from going into cardiac arrest? Well, I, I gave um, him, I gave um, ah, nah, Noel the medical tri, or the engineering tricorder. So it stands to reason that you have a first aid kit. Cool. Um, <laughs> who has the most medicine in this party that isn't more because he's not helping? <laughs> I have a one. I am now nowhere near any help. The captain has, has a three. Yeah, I have probably a one. it'd probably be me. I have a three. Two. Captain, get over here and help me now.
and he's going to start using his first aid kit to try and prevent this thing from going from dying, essentially. <laughs> uh, daring plus medicine, and the captain can assist with daring plus medicine. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I would, I can safely assume that emergency medicine definitely applies here. <laughs> I believe that this is an emergency. Yes. Uh, do 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 do. Xenobiology help? Yes, it would. Thank you. Let's see. Um, do, 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 I should do, say uh, di I think I said difficulty three. Did I did I give a difficulty for this task? Uh, I don't think so, but I think you just did with that. that yep. So. <laughs> oh wait, is this difficulty three because of my unfamiliarity oh. with the species? Uh, yes, it would be. In which case, it be not gets knocked down to two. Yeah, because of quick study. Huzzah. Huzzah. And good, because I didn't help at all. Nope. <laughs> okay. Um, just in case, momentum for a third die. All right. There you go. Uh, you get one momentum. Huzzah. Uh, so, uh, for Lisa, uh, as you're bending over, as you're quickly going through your medical kit... Uh, you hear a small snapping of uh, ribs as um, Captain Bashir attempts to do CPR badly. I'll just, as soon as I hear that, I just sort of, in the most, like, parent way, just sort of smack his wrist. Yeah. No. <laughs> and then I'll just continue with my work. Mm -hmm. uh, you pull out a small, uh, a portable AED uh, defibrillator device out of it. You connect the two nodes to where you believe the uh, 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 the between the heart uh, between the heart sections uh, you call clear there's a small uh, electrical pulse as it does its thing and the creature starts breathing again oh <sighs> okay yeah. okay it wakes up and starts screaming loudly oh for god's sake uh, it's about this time, uh, Reinhardt, you begin, uh, you, once again up above, you step on the transport, or the pad, to go down, and in this instance, it will take you down, but you don't notice the gaudiness anymore. It seems to have been replaced with a more sensible, uh, environment, one that, one that meets your, uh, aesthetics. Oh, I was gonna try and ah. get into that ship. Oh, you want, oh, <laughs> my apologies then, you want to get to the ship. Uh, I'm a ship. I'm I, an engineer. Yeah, I, I'm sorry for us. I'm sorry for making the assumption that you would <laughs> return to the party. And, and not to mention, I made a bond. There are Andorian statues all over the place now. <laughs> yeah, at least in the main center. The main center has uh, all the mud statues are now replaced with those of Andorians, which bear a striking resemblance to you. Okay, my apologies, Moose. I. Let's go back to Moose and see how he attempts to get on the ship. Yeah, is there like any uh, pathways or anything like that? Like not any that, connection points? Not that like, you're able to see. Um, mm -hmm. However, um, if you want to spend two momentum for an advantage, I have an advantage idea for you. Ooh. Well, I'm all about that advantage idea and momentum spending, so sure. Okay. So I'll take two momentum away. And in... Uh, sensing your desires, uh, knowing what would make you immediately happy, that a hard light bridge similar to that that connected the outside world to this place begins to extend from the uh, d exterior of the dome up to the ship. And once it is in place, the dome s develops a seam right in front of you and splits open with a hiss of a large turbo lift door as you delicately put one of your feet on it just to make sure it will hold your weight and you step onto it and it begins to move you up like a uh, airport conveyor belt ooh I'm happy <laughs> yep I thought that would make you happy <laughs> uh, so the ship itself is s smooth is the best way to put it uh, several lights on the inside you're looking in you're not seeing any life signs uh, it does appear uh, as the bridge takes you to the exterior of the ah, as 
as the bridge that you are currently traversing on takes you to the exterior of the bridge of the starship. Uh, you look inside the windows and realize that everything here is sort of sized to be that of the um, Kataf, so slightly smaller, um, with the exception of the command throne, which is obviously meant for mud. Holy crap, is it gaudy. Plush red velvet seat, uh, ornate golden um, or golden throne with platinum filigree, and a spare scepter. Just waiting for them. I'll go up to the seat and take a look at it, and then look to one of the consoles, see if I can get a readout on the ship. Currently no power. Um, well, that makes me a little sad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're sad. <laughs> that does make maybe, you sad. Maybe you'd, maybe you'd be happy if there's uh, power. <laughs> roll me a presence plus con test, please. Uh, difficulty of two. Difficulty of what, sorry? Two. Uh, presence, uh, presence con? Yes, presence plus con. Okay. If you have, like, a... Oh, emotional discipline or mental discipline or something like that would be good focuses. Uh, just life experiences, but not an applicable yeah. focus. Ah, <clears throat> oh, uh, dang. No. Uh, sorry, your the entity is more occupied right now with that with the uh, thoughts and feelings of the captain than you. That's so fair. the, the That's ship fair. remains powered down. It's a nice bridge, though. Hmm. Yeah. Paradise. Very nice indeed. Not more light. <laughs> yeah, I'll just wander around. Yeah. Ooh, I'm going to try and head towards engineering. All right. See what powers this sucker. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll get back to your uh, solo adventure in Slaytown soon enough. Yeah, no one's contacted me. He was like, yeah, we can't. Fine. We don't have our communicators. Yeah. That was one thing they particular said that yeah. we do not. Oh, right. Well, Moose yeah. is used to having to flip tri uh, communicators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, back down here, uh, we now have a conscious and panicking Kataf, um, which is shrieking uh, really, really yeah. loudly. More! Can be the... Uh, Device. Doctor, I can. We need to put him back on. Which device? The, the goggles. The thing it was wearing oh. previously. Ah, yes, yeah. that thing. We need. We need to reinsert it into the um, collective. All right. Anyone okay. going to stop the captain? No. Okay. Captain, you grab it, you slam it on, and the screaming stops, and it just goes into a pleasing uh, <laughs> uh, It's like, alright, someone get Reinhardt. <laughs> Where is he, Captain? I don't know. <laughs> he was going to look around and see if he could shut this down. <laughs> I like. Okay. <laughs> uh, it sure would make me happy if we had our communicators and equipment back. <laughs> uh, roll me pl presence plus con, please. Uh, difficulty of zero. Actually, no, like that difficulty one. I have to make it slightly challenging. No. Oh, I don't have anything I could even pull try for. Oh, well, you managed. Uh, you attract the entity, or you attract Kringle's attention, and just like that, your badges appear on top on your chest, as does Yay. your phasers on your belt and any other equipment that might have been missing. All right. Thank you, Kringle. You are welcome, <laughs> friend Bashir. <laughs> All right. Reinhardt, return to the main room. 
Did I get? Yep, you got it back. Oh, okay. Well, it's time to go. Right. Captain, like, hi, Captain. I found a ship up here, by the way. Really? Yeah, it's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Take pictures. I was, I was just heading to the engineering. Well, we need to have a little talk. We could do both. <laughs> I mean, you could walk and talk. It's true, true. I'll get it, get everybody, <coughs> everybody together. Um, and like, I'm sure the space cop here is uh, really thrilled. But uh, yeah. All right. <coughs> I have given the entity 24 hours. Uh, he will release all of the indus and indigenous species, and by that time, their energies will have filled the ship. And this planet will return back to the way it was. There is no harm in going what's going on. Uh, its craft will be finished, and he will happily return with you, Allah, to his proper time. It's proper time. We didn't talk pronouns, so. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, at that point, you can return Mud and Stella to their original times, and the creature will receive with you. So, tomorrow. Okay. She nods. Perhaps this was part of the paradox. Maybe I was meant to crash into Mud, then crash here. And then, this is maybe how Kringle rejuvenates itself so that it can... You know what? I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'll come up with the proper wording later so I don't get in as much trouble. Um, Captain, I must. Now that the situation down here is sorted, at least for now, might I request to transport to your ship so I can visit my the Altrax? Yes. Um, and I will welcome you to my ship and our festivities for the evening I look forward I would be happy to take part of that so long as my alcohol consumption is kept within a tolerable amount so that I do not spill anything that would violate either your temporal or my temporal um, the accords apparently uh, the bartender is doing something with fertile embryo nog I'm not quite sure but it's another of the pink skins concoctions she pauses at the comment of pink skin and then just laughs a bit humans and then she looks to mud and Stella captain those cannot stay here they'll agreed if they if they were to be beamed onto your ship uh, left in a brig we i i possess the technology that can restructure their minds so that once they are once they are transported back to their time they will not remember any of this i'm well aware of your bill your procedures <laughs> yes that's right and as like, all right, two to bring him up to the brig, and six to beam up. <laughs> Reinhardt, you make your way into the engineering room of the ship. Mm -hmm. You are completely overwhelmed by the uh, futuristic tech. Uh, it's warp, whatever it has in its warp core is more akin, you know those like uh, plasma spheres where you sort of touch one end and then the light will eject from the center of it to your finger it looks like yes. that it looks Ooh. like that you're about to pull out your engineering tricorder when the captain beams all of you to the ship <gasps> very sad very sad immensely sad <laughs> <laughs> very sad I just look at the 
I just look at the captain as I rematerialize. Like, really? <laughs> another time, another place, Commander. This, this was the perfect time and a perfect place. Uh, everyone is everywhere. I don't have all the tokens. Anyways, you will all rematerialize back on the transporter room. As soon as I get the rest of their tokens. There's a you, you, and brass. <clears throat> there they are. Huh. So that is what a 24th century transporter feels like. She shivers. I like that. Oh, you feel that tingling too? Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, that's not natural. You should get that looked at. Mm. It doesn't help that my species is extremely sensitive to electromagnetic uh, fields. Oh, well. Captain, this is your ship. Permission to come aboard. Permission granted. Your ship is in um, security. Uh, I can let you in. And uh, you can work on your repairs and whatever is needed. Uh, the prisoners should be in the brig. Um, anything else you require, just feel free to ask me or my second in command, Commander Hadrix. And I will see you this evening. As if you're, as if his ears are burning. Uh, as you move to leave the trans uh, transporter room, uh, your comm badge chirps. Commander Hadrix, the captain. Yes, Commander. Uh, there appears to be a disturbance in the brig. Probably. Thank you, Commander. We'll take care of it. As uh, Vic Alla uh, heads out, uh, she saddles up beside uh, Moose and Noel. You are the engineers of this time period, correct? Chief Engineer? Yes. You can call me Moose. Yeah, yes. Hello, Moose. Might you accompany me to my ship, please? I, while I am trained in rudimentary repairs, I don't know how to work your computer systems. I need to see what's going on. It'll be, to. it'll be my pleasure to help you and forget everything I saw after all of, the repairs are done. Of course. <laughs> of course you will. <laughs> of course you will, Moose. She smiles a bit. Uh, Brass, do you wish to take along? But of course, I can't pass up this type of opportunity to learn about All right. this type of technology. And I don't know about them wiping the memories yet. Nope. Uh, so okay. You... As 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 you are, are you going to go down to the thing and have them work on it, or yeah, they're going not? to go and do stuff. Okay. Okay. Because like when you get down there, uh, you know how the computer said the bathrooms were. Uh, locked off to yep yep as soon as you get down there uh zax comes out of the restroom <laughs> whoo did not go in there ah oh, that targ went bad uh, captain 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 <laughs> <laughs> only because you brought up how the restrooms were under surveillance <laughs> 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 okay. uh, uh, Captain, you head down to the brig where <laughs> Logos, uh, wherever he went, up there. Too many sheets, too many sheets. Lagos, there we are. Uh, Lagos stops you from outside uh, the brig door there, Captain. And even from, you know, what should be a, you know, 90 decibel ish soundproof door you're hearing the sound of a yelling argument <laughs> so I of course still have his cane and I've taken his robe yes <laughs> <laughs> and the gem yes. so I will uh greetings captain Lee. As you, uh, as Legos, and, yeah. or as Legos lets you pass, he goes, "That's a nice look for you, sir." <laughs> uh, 
as you enter. You can't help. I can't help but try to do the voice. Hardcore fan ten mod. <laughs> once again, you go on for. You have convinced us that you are perfectly sane, and yet here you are once again stranded us and God knows where. Shut up, woman. I did what I had to do. You're basically just going back and forth, not listening to one another. Legos politely says, if you need anything, sir, just try and push the button on the console to summon help. I don't want to go in there. Understandable, Lieutenant. Thank you. Greetings, Captain. And upon seeing you, Stella immediately uh, pipes up. And realizing that she is shut up, Mud does the same and looks to you. Captain, I believe that you are in possession of several of my articles, and I wish them returned at once. I believe you have one of those Federation lo Starfleet laws that say that you cannot keep a prisoner's articles of, as your own, not without proper warrants and whatnot. I think, Captain, that you made a very good point that we aren't under Federation law out here. Absolutely not. Therefore, I demand that to be released immediately. Huh. No. You and your co-pilot will be returned to your time and your place with no memory of anything that happened here. And you will be given a meal this evening. This will all take place tomorrow and I hope you have a beautiful and wonderful evening of quiet solitude and a joyous winter solstice and I will head back to the thing and increase the barrier and the sound <laughs> and walk away Captain, you can't leave me in here with her that's just unbearable pun and at that point he gets she starts winding up again something about you know cheating on her with several annie droids and it just doesn't get any better for anyone involved lieutenant go ahead and put uh uh this whole area on lockdown and you can have the uh you know don't have to worry about going in there he smiles. Gladly, sir. Come join the party. Yes, sir. Uh, now, in the cargo bay. Or, not the cargo bay, the shuttle bay. Uh huh. Once uh, you receive the captain's permission from, as he leaves, uh, as he leaves the brig, he gives you permission to enter the uh, room once again with no. And, uh, where did Fick go? There she is. <laughs> Upon detecting her life sign in her in its proximity, the ship's internal lights power on, and the external running lights begin to power up as well. The ship begins to emit a bit of a hum, and uh, Moose, you feel your beard sort of standing up on end as uh, the static electricity begins to build within the shuttle bay. So what y'all doing? Oh no, Zach is following you. Do you? <coughs> Zach I was in the bathroom. You in. Yes, yes, he was. Hey, Zach, don't you have some uh, plasma conduit to scrub? Not in that. Ah, uh, just emptied the old plasma conduit not too long ago. Hmm. What mm. you doing? Classified. Ah, uh, classified. And how are you, Pink Lady? <laughs> She looks at Zack and then looks at Moose and Noel. I think two and in two individuals is perfectly sufficient here. And she'll I see. Pull up ah, a fine. She'll... I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Tellerite, but uh, the Temporal Prime Directive and I believe that these two individuals outrank you. Trust Aye. me. You're better off not being in here. Might lose your beard. 
Wouldn't be the first time, probably not the last. <laughs> but I gotcha, I gotcha. Maybe later you and me could uh, kick some back. And he slaps her on the ass and leaves Gargo Bay. <laughs> there was a time where my species would have eaten his for breakfast. You can stun him if you'd like. She, I heard that! She pauses and gives it a little more thought than is at, probably due. Then she shakes her head and says, No, I have more important things to do. Hello. Hello, ship. And then she runs her hand along its uh, port side and the canopy uh, forms a seam and opens with a hiss actually physically hovering away from itself, not on a hinge or any of that stuff. So, I suppose I should tell you what you're in for. Upon completion of this, both of you will be transported back with me to the, my home ship, where your memories will be rearranged. You will know that you helped me solve, fix my time ship, but you will not remember anything you've seen or any of the procedures that you've used. Am I clear? If you're... Yep. All right. And you... You see disappointment on Noel's face. Perfect. Let's get started. Now, if... Tap the back there three times and you'll pull out the uh, transmodular... Uh, the transphasic modular inducer. After that, it's a simple recalibration of the neutrino positronic ion array. And a bunch of more techno babble follows as she barks orders like she's the chief engineer. Hey, it's new tech. Moose is just happy to help. Yep. Okay, uh, for Lisa and Moore, do you guys wish to do anything before the the dinner scene? Uh, other than Moore's going back to his quarters and getting into, like, holiday attire. I can't wait for you to describe what that holiday attire looks like. Um, for Lisa, anything for you? Um... I think for Lisa's doing about the same. Cool. All right, so uh, 1,800 hours rolls around. The uh, end of Alpha Shift is sounded. And as you are currently in geostationary orbit around a relatively secure um, uh, planet, the captain has authorized Beta Shift to not take over for at least an hour and a half. So we find ourselves in the mess hall where everybody who is anybody is gathered. Why am I bigger than everyone else? I'm sure there was a reason for it at the time. <laughs> it's your ego. <laughs> uh, upon, seeing, uh, upon seeing his new best friend enter, uh, wherever Noel was, there's Noel, Bud immediately bobs over and forms a s small... Uh, comfortable five foot distance away from you at face height but stays roughly around the rear okay um, oh I can I'll in, I'll invite him to our the command table yeah. um yeah he can join us Hendrix Lisa Moore Noel and Moose oh, oh Moose isn't actually there oh he's not okay Oh, he needs to be. <laughs> He'll be here soon enough, I would hope, but... Okay, no moose yet. Okay, Moore, what is your holiday attire? Um, hearing the rumors that there was a costume contest, he came, like, full dressed up as an elf. <laughs> Ears and everything. <laughs> Ears, hat, everything. Does Does he have the, uh, like, the curled shoes that have the bells at the tip? Uh, Sure. Yes. Yeah, and like the tight, <laughs> tight green pants with the the tunic that's that's too long. Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the captain is actually wearing the cloak, um, the scepter, and has a basic pimp hat on with the antenna sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, since you guys didn't experience it, underneath is a maroon smoking jacket and triple slippers. Uh, uh, for Lisa, do you have any special holiday yeah. attire? Okay, so 
You know that outfit I described last week that I didn't get to use because I realized that uh, I brought a different character down to that station uh-huh. we were on? Yes. Uh, imagine that, but a little more holiday colors. So, like, you know, the reds and greens. Uh, they've got sort of... Uh, they got, like, a tinsel-like material at the uh, cuffs. Yeah. And definitely, like, the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, sort of like these red and white uh, striped leggings on. <laughs> and just like a Santa hat that's a little too small that they're wearing on their head. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Noel, are you dressed up for the festivities? Um, Yes, I am. I'm in preparation for this, Captain, looking back on, on uh, Customs of Terra at this time, I am wearing a, what they call it, an ugly sweater <laughs> you gotta describe it yeah gotta go on come on um it's hand knitted with um this sleigh and five reindeer pulling it with lights that actually light up for Chris Kring- for Santa Claus <laughs> is his eyes and they're red so when they light up it looks like some type of evil demon eye uh, y'all are hilarious. Uh, so we have a costume contest. We have an ugly sweater contest. What else we got? Sacrifices. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Commander Hadrix shows up. Um, he is wearing the loudest jacket you have ever seen. Um, we're not entirely sure what material it is, but it appears to be a tie-dye red-green mixture. Actually, let's call it a red-green suit because I think he'd look dashing in it. Oh, yeah. And as you yeah. as you look at the suit, the colors sort of shift over time. He just looks at you and nods and says, it's a Talaxian trade secret. <laughs> <laughs> and the bartender, Taravis, saunters or slinks over with a tray of drinks that look far too, that look almost as cheerful as all of you. He places them down in front of you. He looks over at Moore and goes, there was a time that would be called cultural appropriation. And then he just sort of sulks back to his desk, or to the bar. <laughs> I'll calm Moose. as like, your presence is requested at the uh, yes, lounge. Where, where, where is Moose at this point in time? The comms go unanswered, but he's in his quarters. Uh, if you, if, uh, Ooh, what was that? Uh, what are you doing, cat? Sorry, my cat got hooked on something. Uh-oh. Uh, headphone cord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, That's what the call So, yeah. what Moose is doing right now is, yeah, he has, he doesn't answer his comms, uh, and he's in his quarters, uh, but he, his quarters look a little different. Mm-hmm. He's in what looks like an auditorium. He's sitting down in a chair with his wife next to him and a bunch of other parents, and he's watching a play of his daughter at her school. It's a hollow recording that uh, was sent to him, and he has used his emitters in his own quarters to be there in person as ah. best as he can. Ah. So, uh, Captain, as you calm, try to calm Moose, uh, the computer responds. Lieutenant Commander Reinhardt wishes not to be disturbed unless there is an engineering emergency. Very well. All right, I got you all here. Uh, After studying the cultural phenomenon of many of the species, a lot of it seems to be circled around gift-giving. So... I uh, will call over uh, Travis and have him help me out and bring all these little packages over. Travis and, uh, shows up with a large bundle of <laughs> presents. Yeah, it's in a sack. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't look and, happy, uh, but then again, yeah, he's a grumpy Vulcan. He never looks happy. Yeah. <laughs> so I had Noel a bottle. Uh, it is blue, uh, wrapped in ribbon. Um, very, very old uh, 
bottle of Andoria Nail. Um, Hadrix has a uh, basically it's like a terrarium with a leaf uh, inside of it that I've collected um, from actually his uh, was got from his home planet um, basically to represent that uh, spiritual tree the Talaxians have ah yes uh, all right more I hand you an odd shaped box um, it's rather large um, very nicely wrapped and as you proceed to open it it is a ugly looking statue I, um, uh, for Lisa I first like shake it <laughs> okay you can shake it it doesn't really make a lot of noise yeah it thunks it thunks uh, um it, rip it open okay there is an ugly looking statue um it is uh from Riza and the you and Lagos and it says may you experience Jamharan for Lisa you recognize this I recognize that word yes, <laughs> you do the statue very quickly too because is it is the statue a horgon yes it is a horgoth <laughs> oh no more like very visibly blushes <laughs> Hedrix just looks puzzled that's an oddly garish statue why is it captain um I'll just sort of tap Hedrix and I'll yeah sure I have like a small data pad on me and I'll just type a little text message that says it's a sex thing <laughs> he takes it he blushes oh 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 my oh. <laughs> and he'll slide it back to you mm. carry on and um <clears throat> doctor this took me a lot of work and how big is the box <laughs> it is a data pad oh you have a data pad um i it took me a lot of strings to pull um it is key to your dna and i wasn't allowed to even look at it and i hand him the data pad in my, in my head i feel like the captain just got for Lisa like a twenty three and me, but uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna look through the data pad. It is a recipe. Uh, it, it, go on. It is a recipe. It is a it is hand or it is created by Admiral Riker, and it is the recipe for the Riker family pizza. Do not share. Followed by a very lengthy uh, legal document about how this is copyright to Admiral Riker and the Riker family, and any uh, dis dispersion or attempts to resell, rebrand, this will, you know, not only result in Riker's personal wrath, but him completely and utterly abusing his rank as Admiral to fire your ass. You can't tell if Orleza's trying to hold in laughter or is just genuinely in awe. <laughs> The other side note is there was actually like a couple ingredients missing, so you can't make them exactly right, and that you were to make it your own. <laughs> huh. If you excuse me, Captain. <laughs> and for Lisa, this place has, a, I'm sure this ship has a kitchen of some sort, right? Of course. <laughs> Right next to the bar, I'm sure. I'm going in the kitchen. I'm going to attempt <laughs> to try and recreate some of this damn pizza because it's Admiral Riker's pizza and it's good pizza. <laughs> <laughs> While he's doing that, I am going to head down to Moose's quarters. All right. Uh, Taravis just shakes his head and goes, if the smoke detector goes off, I am not responsible for what is going to happen. I know. I'm the one that's in here. 
Okay, uh, Moose, you are watching a your daughter's play. Uh, what is the play of? Hey, there's Lagos. Yeah. Oh, uh, the uh, oh man, I forgot now. Um, it has the Nutcracker. nutcracker. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. That would be the Nutcracker. Okay. <laughs> or. <laughs> I kept thinking it was like the sugar plum fairy tale. Like, that's not right. It has the dance of the sugar plums, but, you know. Yeah. So, r- yeah. R- roughly, um, you're about probably two thirds of the way through the play. And you're here, as you have lost yourself in the orchestral score, you're hearing a high pitched s- uh, chirping sound that, does, that comes in slightly off key. It takes you a couple times to realize oh, that's the door chime. And I'm knocking, shaving a haircut on the door. <laughs> uh, yeah, the door will open up. I'll, I'll say it come in. All right. Uh, Captain, you are assaulted I... just as the uh, Dance of the Sugar Plum f- Fairies begin. Nice. Do, 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 do. And you are... Okay. I was like, I won't, I won't disturb you. But again, I have gotten gifts for my senior staff. And I hand him, um, I don't know, uh, probably about a about the size of a shoebox, maybe a little larger, um, wrapped package. And I go, I'll hand it to him, and I go, you enjoy, and enjoy the rest of the night, and I'll leave. Thank you, Captain. Uh, yeah, he'll he'll unwrap the gift. Okay. So as you open the box, it is. A classic ship in a bottle, um, like real glass bottle, um, uh, very ancient. But inside of the bottle itself, instead of a normal, um, like ancient, like fairy ship, it is a uh, copy of the Phoenix, uh, the first warp drive vessel um, held in the bottle. He'll just have a big grin on his face as he uh, pauses the program and uh, goes places it in uh, his room. Good gifts. There you go. (laughs) I thought so. I put some time. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, Does anyone else have anything they'd like to do? No, you can fade to black as uh, Moore is giving Lagos the showing Lagos the gift. <laughs> I like to, I like to imagine Moore's probably left the uh, the iceberg by then, and yeah. it's like for Lisa will come out with the pizza. Yeah, no, and I mean, only... there's different toppings on it. There's some bits of uh, cooked Denobulan lemur on it. Yeah. And um, other things that are probably more pertain to Denobulan and Ryzen cuisine uh, that they'll just sort of set down on the table. Uh, and just because I find it amusing, uh, can you roll me a... You monster. <laughs> Let's do a control plus... Con uh, or science, me. maybe? Yeah, let's do science. <laughs> Medicine. And... To make I'll... sure he didn't food poison people. I mean, but cooking is also a science, yeah. so I'm all yeah. A-OK I with science. More science yeah. yeah, let's do control science. Uh, difficulty of one. Um, whatever threat I have left, I'm going to bump the complication 18 to 20. <laughs> You're a monster. <laughs> um, okay, I... I I have, I have a couple because this is a more lighthearted session. Yeah. Uh, can, can I pop my determination <laughs> for the value to boldly go because Forlisa's never made pizza before? Sure, <laughs> man. <laughs> go for it. So that's an automatic two sex yeah successes, which means yeah. you've already won. Yeah. Yeah. Moore's getting uh, Moore's getting the two sexes tonight. Um, yeah. I mean, I have, I've got this. Yeah. <laughs> as as like well a... as many Damn perspectives, it. more knowledge. Yeah. Um, and there's always something new to discover. Oh, <laughs> I can, I can, I can share 
as captain, I can share my determination of boldly go. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see how well uh, you roll on this. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to try. And, I'm not. I'm not going to try and ask for to focus of first contact. <laughs> nope. <laughs> The pizza looks like a Horta. <laughs> it actually is a Horta. Horta. <laughs> it was an ensign taking a nap. <laughs> pizza is going to send out for you. Well, hey, four successes to make pizza. <laughs> it means you max this out at momentum. Yeah, at you yeah. are. It is a very, very good pizza. And those who stayed behind, uh, which would be, I guess, Nolan Hadrix at the moment. As well as a few individuals who get, who are attracted from by the smell, just you know, brave the, um, or realize that tonight rank has no privilege and decide that they each deserve a slice. Uh, yes. So, so no. for Lisa, uh, by the by the second pizza, you realize that you have a hit on your hands, and you immediately just toss the, well, you don't toss the pad because you know Taravis would then learn about it. So. The good news is everyone likes the pizza. The bad news is you're you're pretty much stuck in the kitchen making the pizza, only able to socialize in between bringing out you know fresh pizza. That's but fine. Everyone likes. Well, Lisa doesn't care. They're enjoying it. So approximately 24 hours go past. Uh, more, you recognize a um, massive uh, energy disturbance across the planet, as the entity mass cre mass uh, creates gifts for the uh, small uh, mandrel children to, or the the Kataf children to open and play with and bring them happiness. After which point um, mm, uh, Vic Alla appears one last time, bids you all farewell, takes the gem from the captain, hops on board her ship, and vanishes. Uh, Reinhardt, you and Noel wake up the next morning, and you are just trying to remember precisely what she was talking about. Something about calibrating the ion drive with the n neon flux capacity. Uh, words just mm. sort of escape you, but you know you did good. Nice. Yeah. Um, and one by one, uh, so the giant ship that was being constructed dematerializes. It just sort of disintegrates as does the structure for the North Pole, as it's no longer needed. And one by one, all the pieces that you have confiscated from mud vanish as well. With the one exception of a scepter, and the, which uh, is left in the captain's office with a yes. gift to Bashir from Kringle. Yes. <laughs> and on that note, we will end the session. The crew has saved Christmas and Kringle and pretty much anyone else they wanted to save. Except mine, <laughs> because to heck with him. <laughs> uh, so, that is our little uh, Christmas episode <laughs> of Past, Present, and Future. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, again, I made the announcement at the beginning. This is our third to last episode. We have two left. They're going to be good ones, I hope. Well, they, should, they should be, because I've been planning these ones for a while. Um, so, thank you all for watching. <gasps> thank you all for playing, and I will see you guys all next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Happy holidays. <laughs>